Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. It's time to check out this XLR. I really love these cars. Let's get started. So this is a 2004 Cadillac XLR. It is not the XLR-V, it's just the XLR. And yes, it has a North Star V8. Are you serious? Do we really need to have had four North Stars? So yes, it does have a North Star. This is our fourth North Star. And there are really two major things that can happen with these engines, and both of them require an engine out, especially on the front wheel drive models is the head bolts have failed, blown the head gasket, we all know about those with the North Star, and oil leaks from the oil pan, the lower oil pan. On the front wheel drive cars, those require engine out. They're just, it's just crazy. Every time something, one of those things goes wrong, the engine has to come out to fix it. Luckily, this is a rear wheel drive configuration, and also luckily it does not have blown head gaskets, but we'll have to see once we get it on the lift if number two comes to be true. And there really kind of can be a third thing, can be with timing chain issues or transmission troubles that, again, the engine has to come out to get the side pan off. And it's kind of a pain. It's really, really a pain to work on the front wheel drive North Stars. The ones that Mrs. Wizard talked about that we've had in the past were front wheel drive North Stars. But this time around, it is a rear wheel drive one. And in the 0405 year, they really started to solve the head gasket issue. So it's really not a problem with these. The earlier ones, 99, 2000, 01, 02, those are your prime head gasket year. And even some of the mid 90s as when they came out with the North Star, but this one luckily is towards the beginning of fixing the problem. Of the three that we've owned, only one of them had blown head gaskets really. And that was years ago when I worked at a shop. I did the job myself, I did the head stud upgrade. And although, it does fix the problem, and I've gotten several people call wanting us to do that job. I turn it down because it's just not worth it. It can be $5,000 with today's money or more to fix the head studs, because once you get the engine out, you're going to find more than just the head studs. You're going to say, well, you should probably do the timing chains while it's all apart. Let's go ahead and do the transmission solenoids. Let's do this and this and this and that. And it adds up really, really fast. Most of these Cadillacs, especially if you find one with a blown head gasket, aren't even worth $2,000. The rest of the car could be immaculate. And they sell on Facebook Marketplace for two grand. When they're in excellent condition, they're worth four grand. That's it. Why would you sink 7,000 or 5,000 or some crazy large number into the car? You will never, ever get it back. So that's why I quit doing that job. And luckily, I don't have to do that job on this one. Many of you who watch Video Bob's YouTube channel, if you don't, you should, because there is very interesting videos. He's automotive just like I am and also other things. But he has a, a Cadillac XLR, and he has a lot of interesting things he talks about on these cars, some upgrades, common problems, some Bluetooth module installs, things of that nature. You should go check out those videos. They're really good. But when I saw he had his, and I've seen these in the past, I really just had a hankering for these cars. I really wanted one. But every time I went to look at one, and I'll pull out my phone and show you some prices, I get greeted with that, 30 thousand dollars. I went on Bring a Trailer, I scanned through multiple different ones, and even on Facebook Marketplace, they're always 20 grand and higher. Some of them are lower miles, they go for seventy thousand dollars. These cars not too long ago weren't even worth ten, five, in good shape, but they've become a collector's item and the demand for them is so high, that the price is just jumping through the roof. So to get a nice one, it's going to be at least twenty, possibly thirty thousand dollars. And that usually turned me away. I was like, I just don't want to spend that much on an XLR. They are an awesome car, but I don't know about 30 or 40 grand. So how much did you spend on this car, Wizard? $9,000. <sighs> Not that bad. Actually, Euro Asian Bob is the reason why I was able to acquire this car. He knows I've been looking for one. And he sent me a text. He said, Wizard, 
there's this XLR that I can get for you. He's got some connections. He's got connections to get all kinds of awesome cars. And he sent me some pictures. He was like, I think we can be out the door around nine grand on this car. He said, but I want to tell you something. He says, I haven't looked at the car. I don't even know what you're getting. It's a grab bag. You could get a car that needs a few issues fixed and you'll be golden. Or you could get a disaster nightmare. He says, I'm just telling you this up front. I haven't looked at the car. If you want it, I can access and buy it and just have it shipped to your shop. But all bets are off. I said, I'll take it. And he again, he went through the rigmarole granny. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. I knew being as an 04 or newer, they pretty much solved the head gasket problem. There are a few still that fail, but not hardly any at all once you get past 04. It's really not a problem anymore. So I knew that probably wouldn't be a problem. They did mention he didn't think the convertible top worked, and it doesn't. We'll take a look at that here in a minute. But I figured if I have to fix the oil pan, it's really not that big of a deal. And even if I have to put an additional five grand into this car, I'm still ahead that I didn't have to spend 25000 to get one that still probably has problems. Just not as many as possibly this one. So let's go ahead and take a look around this car and see what I got. Like I mentioned, it's a grab bag. I, I, hope, I, I hope I did good on this one, guys. Let's take a look. Uh, Wizard, is this your new Ferrari? Uh, yeah, it's a 599. Oh, good. So you're giving me the 308. Uh, no. Oh, man. Doesn't pass as a 599. That's too bad. Well, one thing I do notice right off the bat is these little covers in here are kind of floppy. They may have, The wind pushed them out, or maybe someone's had the bumper off. Again, I mentioned it's a grab bag. There's, there's really no way to know what the full story is. It was a risk that I took. Luckily, these headlights are not broken or cracked because they are $1,500 a piece used. These XLR parts can be very expensive. This side's a little yellow and a little bit rough on the top, but then the other side is pretty much crystal clear. So maybe this one was broken at some point and they replaced it. Again, I don't know the story. As we go down this side, the paint is in good condition. You can see the calipers have a red shield on them. Those are entirely fake. They're just sheet metal. I don't know if I'll keep them on there from a distance. They look really cool, but they're also kind of tacky at the same time. As we go down this side, you can see that it doesn't appear to be wrecked. Everything is in its place. The panel gaps are nice on it, and it's not all rusted or beat up or anything. Then we come to the back. You can see it's got the, kind of the gold lettering on it, XLR, the infamous North Star V8. And it is in good shape back here as well. You can see the stock muffler set up down there, kind of like a C6, it's in the center. These tail lights, I'm glad that they're not broken either because they are $2,000 a piece used. They are insane. The tires look like they've got some concrete scuff or something on them. But again, down this side, there is very little dents or scratches or anything, and I do believe at some point it probably was repainted, and I believe they did a pretty decent job at it. It looks, looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and open the hood. And here's our beautiful VVT North Star V8 4.6. This is not the typical North Star that you would find like in a DeVille or an STS or something like that. This one actually has variable valve timing. I'll go ahead and pull the top off for you guys. You can see these little magnet cam actuators that it's variable valve timing. You won't find that on a DeVille. This is something you find on the XLR. The starter, like all of the North Stars, is underneath the intake, which is also like an LS400 Lexus. It's just something that they did to save space, conserve, and fit the engine in a small bay. It doesn't have any Honda fanboy cone-shaped air filters. It's all stock. I really like the stock. 320 horsepower and roughly about the same amount of torque, 300 pounds of torque, 330, somewhere around in there. I don't know the exact number on the torque. These engines are a high RPM engine. You don't get 
crazy power at 2,000 RPMs. You got to get up around four, five to get the power out of these. Plenty of power for me. I like the XLRV, but I don't think I need that kind of power. I'll end up in jail. So Mrs. Wizard would not be happy if the car wizard was in jail. No, you, you might have a new uh, roommate there for a while, dear. Yeah, I don't need a different kind of roommate. You can see the, the antifreeze is clean. We can open up the reservoir cap here. And it is clean on the inside. There's no gray gunk inside of it. Let me get my flashlight out. Nice and clean and orange in there. That's what you like to see. I have driven this thing several miles, like 20 or 30 miles. No overheating, no issues. It does have a code for the airflow sensor, and I do see that somebody has put an aftermarket, your local parts store. It really deserves a, a GM AC Delco air, airflow sensor, so I'll be putting that on there. But er, otherwise, it's pretty clean under the hood. All right, well, let's let Mrs. Wizard give you guys a tour of the interior. Okay, ladies and gents, had to start the car here real quick. I'll turn it off after we see our mileage, but look at that, 62,820. That's really low for this car. Let's turn off that engine, though. One of the reasons we had to start the car to see that odometer well was it's a push button, which is definitely new for this time period. It's very cutting edge for the year this car is. But you'll see that this is in really good shape. You see a little bit of some wood accents here on our steering wheel. We slide up to our dash. It's got some dust up there, but that's about it. There's no major cracks, nothing going on. All those little tiny intricate little holes to our speakers and other access spaces are nice and complete, not broken apart. We've got a very lovely dash area here, very nice kind of a dove gray, got dark dove and light dove, all leather wrapped and have some lovely plastic. Well, it's kind of got some, uh, Kind of a pattern to that up there. Let's see if we can get close enough and get that pattern showing for you. It kind of has a, I don't know, a carbon fiber-ish design to it. And well, our infotainment system there is trying to get more modern, not what we're used to today, but definitely has that Windows 95 appearance to it with our buttons like that. Have a nice little slot there for CDs. Have our very simple HVAC system controls because again, this is a Cadillac which does specialize in the very geriatric market. Has some more wood trim here where our gear selector and a nice little hidey hole which is actually hiding our key and key fob today. But it still works, it is in good shape. As we slide to our door card, you'll see lots more of the leather on the door as well. See that our Bose speaker cage there is looking fabulous. And it has behind the little hole here, a little bitty cubby spot where you can hide like maps and things. It's no longer just a little pocket. It's actually a hard cover on there and it's in really good shape. Our seats are in very good shape, nice leather as well. And we have no back seat at all because it is a two seater. One thing that is interesting is it does have a cute little hidey hole here. You push the button and then you twist this to open and it's got two little spots there that we can hide who knows what in. As we look here's our large center console pops up nicely and you can see it does have a nice power port there as well. As we move here you can see on the floor it does have a lovely Cadillac stitched embroidered floor mats looking good. And one nice thing is when we look here in our glove box, so many times these things are missing. We'll find all of our owner's manuals. All of them are in here. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Don't have a major repair history on it, but even yet this having this option is really nice. As we look here at the door one last time, uh, you'll notice it's missing something and that is a door handle. It has a button, it's a push button. It's an electric opener. There we go. And it also has a little map pocket as well. So as we end up here at our steering wheel, you'll see that we've got our normal controls for the radio, some cruise control as well, but that's about it. Pretty simple to use, but again, as I mentioned, you know, Cadillacs are marketed towards that older crowd. 
So enough talk of this interior. Let's figure out what's going on with this convertible top. Now the convertible top does not work and we're gonna show you why here in a minute, but at least the trunk opens and it's part of the convertible top working, but it's really cool when it opens, I'll show you. Sounds like there was a few air bubbles when that when it was opening. But anyways, it works. And you can tell people have been trying to work back here. These are notorious for rain getting into the trunk and it's no surprise that it has. When I move this carpet out of the way, it's wet under here. You can see the water. So I'm gonna have to pull this apart and let it air dry. No, that's not because it was a flood car. The rest of the car is bone dry. These are notorious for rain getting in. And one thing that I found, that black module right there with the colorful wires, when I pulled that connector off, there was water in it. So that tells me rain or car wash or something has gotten in here. And it took out the top control module. I'll have to address the leaking trunk. Also get a good used top control module. And I've already checked the wiring, everything else. I know that that will fix my convertible top. These do have a cover or lid that goes over them, but they're not watertight. One common issue, like if you watch on Video Bob's channel, is this little switch right here that goes to this luggage stove panel here. The switch is missing, but it's down here. Let me find it for you guys. It's already been bypassed. They just put two wires together because that's a common issue that your top won't work and it's because this thing's not stowed properly. Someone's already bypassed that, but that's not why it's not working. Kind of a weird sound. Anyways, let's get this thing in the air. Now that we've got this thing up in the air, I can definitely tell it's been repainted. You can see right here on this little scrape bar, whatever you want to call that, it's actually blue. It's been painted over. I don't know if they just did a recoat over the top of the car or what they did, but it is what it is. And actually, I think they did a pretty decent job. The paint's decent on it. This is our big scoop up into our condenser and radiator. And it's nice and dry, luckily. Here's the back side, actual radiator in the fan. Also nice and dry. I do think that this power steering hose has a leak. It's spraying a little bit in here. You can see there's some a little bit of a drip there. That's coming from the power steering hose. Just like a C6 Corvette, we have one large leaf spring, a fiberglass one, across this, this way, not like a leaf spring like you're thinking of. It's kind of cool. Check the brakes here. These are pretty good up front. Nothing loose. Oh no, there's a strut that's blown out. Yep, that'll have to be replaced. Ah! Just like I mentioned, the three things that are common on a North Star. It doesn't have blown head gaskets, but the lower oil pan is definitely leaking. It's pretty heavily also. It looks like it's just been spraying all the way back. So I'll have to drop this subframe a little bit, or like maybe this far, and get this oil pan out. And then it's really not that hard of a job. Put a new gasket and that'll solve that. Luckily, it's not like a front-wheel drive North Star where basically the engine would have to come out to do this job, which it doesn't. You know, Wizard, maybe the car is just looking out for you and adding rust protection. Uh, I don't want the rust protection. You might need to solve it, but it's going to do a better job than the poor SS truck. Yeah, that, that thing is in pretty bad shape. Over here, the brakes are good. Oh, and that strut is blown out as well. Actually, it's just a shock. It doesn't have a spring attached to it. Looks like there's, yeah, 
there's oil all over from that shock. Otherwise, the front looks decent, except for the oil pan. We can see here, just like on a C6 Corvette, the transmission is not here. There's nothing but a bell housing and then a tube, a shaft tube or a torque tube, whatever you want to call it, that goes all the way back there. We'll take a look at that here in a minute. Here's our exhaust. Everything looks to be intact. Looks pretty good. And we get back to the transmission. It's just your typical GM transmission. It's nothing fancy. It just happens to be in the back. Luckily, it's not leaking fluid out everywhere. There is a little bit of seepage on this little resonance, kind of an absorption device. But that oil is coming from the oil pan up front. It's just blowing all the way back here. And we come to our transverse leaf spring again. Left to right, not front to back like most people think. Brakes are pretty good in the back. Oh good, these shocks are nice and dry, luckily. Very good, I'm glad. CV boots are good. I don't see anything else leaking. These strut rods are good. It looks like a tie rod from a power steering rack, but it's not. It's just kind of an alignment rod. Over here, brake is good. This shock is nice and dry, luckily. CV boots are good. Everything's nice and happy there. Very good. And then you have your little differential, kind of like a transaxle thing in the back. This is bolted to the back of the transmission. That's where your differential resides. And it has some beefy mufflers. Being it's a Cadillac, they want it to be nice and quiet. But that might be changing. We'll have to see. Those are definitely some big mufflers. The tires are fair. They need to be replaced at some point, but I'll just use them for now while I'm fixing everything else. And then we'll look into tires later. But all in all, I don't think I got too bad of a deal on this for the price I paid. You know, it's kind of a, like I mentioned, it's a grab bag. You don't know what you're going to get. It could have been completely a disaster, but it's not. It, for the price, I can't complain. Well, let's get this thing on the ground. So luckily, all I have to do is fix the oil pan, the power steering leak, replace that top control module, and get that top working again. Just generally polish it up, clean it up, and fix a few things here or there from front shocks as well. And it's not going to be disastrous. I think that I have nine grand into it, and I'll probably have another three or so into it to fix the rest. I'll still be way below what they cost right now. Thinking of cost, Tyler from Hoovy's Garage years ago sold General Motors vehicles at a dealership and he told me some of the stories that these things just set on the dealership lot unsold because like I mentioned it's basically a C6 Corvette with a Cadillac engine and Cadillac clothes on. A lot of the stuff underneath underpinnings is just a C6 Corvette and at the time when these came out a C6 Corvette was like 50 grand. 40 grand, somewhere around in there. If you want an XLR, 70 or 80 grand. And you got less power, you got the North Star engine, which at the time, and it's still kind of that way, was the less desirable engine. People didn't want to spend more money for less car. Even though today it's not less car, they go for the same as a Corvette anymore, or more. That's just kind of an interesting story that goes along with that. And yes, like Mrs. Wizard showed you guys, only 62,000 miles. So it's relatively low miles for being a 2004. So all in all, I think I did pretty good. Eurasian Bob did me well on this one. He usually always does. I'll get the things fixed on it, and this will be a really sweet cruiser. And no, Mrs. Wizard, you can't drive my Cadillac. <sighs> okay, but, and, I, and I guess maybe I'll let you come home tonight. Okay, well that's good, because it is going to be worth a lot more than what I paid initially. I do get the 308. Maybe. I don't know. After you drive it a few times, you may not like it. I don't know. I liked it the one time I got to drive it like a grandma. 
Yeah. So anyways, if you're curious what kind of tools we're going to use to go through this thing and fix it up, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because you want to keep up with this thing and you definitely want to keep up with that big thing back there. The big huge bus. Thanks for watching.